Hello friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel Programming Knowledge. In this video, I will show you how to write a program for this pattern in Python. I have already made a video about it. However, I will show you different method to print this pattern. So, let's switch to Jupyter Notebook screen. Oh, not this one. Just forget it. Let's rewrite. What a noob. It's a joke! Based on real events. First, I will take a variable called number. We will take input from the user and convert it into an integer. Before moving further, let's understand the number of rows and columns required to print this pattern. As shown here, if the number is 4 then it required 7 rows and columns. If the number is 3 then it requires 5 rows and columns for 2, it requires 3 rows and columns. And for 1, it requires 1 row and a single column. By this, we can derive a formula the number of rows and columns can be derived as 2 times number n minus 1. So, let's store this formula in size variable. Before printing this pattern we will print a pattern with stars and after that, we will convert it into a concentric square pattern. So, I will take one for loop for rows and one inner for loop for the column. Let's run this code. As you can see here, the number of rows and columns is 7. There are several techniques to print this pattern. First of all, we will print this outer square pattern and after that we will see how we can print other square patterns and combine all of them to print this pattern. Now consider this whole square as a matrix. As shown in this picture, we can compare the position and its index values. When the i index is 1 and the j index is 1 then value will be 3. First of all, let's focus on the outer square. We divide this square by its four sides. When you compare this two horizontal line with its position, then you will find that the i index is constant for each elements. For upper horizontal row i index is 0, and for the lower one the i index is 6, which is nothing but a size of the matrix minus 1. So, we can write a condition in an inner for loop that if the value of i is 0 or the value of i is size minus 1 then we will print 4 which is number. Let's run this code. As you can see we have printed both horizontal lines. Now, compare this two vertical line with its position. Here j index is same for each elements in the columns. For, upper vertical column j index is 0, and for the lower one the j index is 6, which is nothing but a size of the matrix minus 1. So, let's add another two conditions that if the value of j is 0 or the value of j is size minus 1 then we will print number 4. Here, we are checking four conditions to print the outer square. In the first and second conditions, we are checking that whenever the value of i or the value of j is minimum, in this case, 0, then it will print number 4. Moreover, in the third and fourth conditions, we are checking that whenever the value of i or the value of j is maximum, in this case, 6, then it will print number 4. Let's analyze the third and fourth conditions in detail. In both of the conditions, we are checking that whenever both values, i and size minus 1 are the same then we will print the number. It means the difference of i and size minus 1 will be 0. So, we can modify our if conditions as shown in the image. Here is the modified version of our four if conditions. In all of the if condition, we are checking that any of the values become 0, then we will print the number. So, instead of checking these four conditions individually, we can simply check that if any of the left side values become minimum, in this case, 0, then it will print the number. So, we can modify the if condition as shown in the image. Let's make change in our code. Let's run this code. Here, we got the outer square. Doing good. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> now for the next immediate inner square, we can write the same condition as for the outer square, but with little modification. For the outer square, we are checking that if any of these four conditions meet zero, then we will print number four. But here by analyzing this pattern for immediate inner square we can say that if any of these four conditions meet one then we will print number three. So. Here I will copy this if condition and paste it in else if condition. Here instead of 0, we will check for 1. 
And in the print statement, we have to print number minus 1. We can continue the same for other inner squares. Here, we got the output. Now, in a print statement instead of zero, we can write the minimum function. Because if the minimum function will receive zero value then it will print the number. We can do the same for this else if conditions. Instead of writing one, we can add this minimum function. We can do the same for each else if condition. Now, if you check the print statement in every condition then it is the same. So, we don't need any of these if conditions. We can simply keep this print function. It gives the output that we needed. Let's quickly discuss that what we have done in this code. We are finding the minimum distance from the minimum index, which is equal to 0, and from the maximum index, which is equal to size minus 1. We are checking this for both row and column. After getting the minimum distance value, we are subtracting that from the number. Let's make this code even more complex with the help of list comprehension. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Like this video, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. If you know other methods to print this pattern then comment below. We will meet in the next video until then enjoy programming.